Over the last 11 years of Minecraft's existence, one of the most popular challenges to do was Skyblock, and rightly so. It was a right amount of fun and challenge for the average player. But how about for the top 1% who want the hardest Minecraft has to offer? So today I will show you the nearly impossible challenge that can entirely be done in vanilla Minecraft. So the start is similar to Skyblock, but the difference being is that we start on a single block of grass with nothing in our inventory or around us. And now the location of our spawn is super important. Our spawn needs to be in a snowball area. So basically when it rains, so instead of rain, we get snow. You'll see why this is super important, which means we need to either spawn in a mountain biome or any other snowing biome. So it means our spawn is already limited to the snowy tundras biome, the ice spikes biome, and the snowy mountain biome. And this spawn already has a super low chance of happening. So once you're on the correct biome, the next step would be to expand our island. The only way we can do so is by collecting the layer of top snow that forms. However, if we just break it with our hands, we won't get the snow we need. So we need an iron shovel. The only way we can do this is to get lucky with a zombie spawn. You're probably wondering how we can get a zombie to spawn in this single block. There's one way, and this involves us getting at least 24 blocks away from the spawn. Since the only way we can go is down, we have to jump into the void. However, if you jump down with full health, by the time you die, you'll actually be more than 24 blocks away, meaning that no mob will spawn. So to make sure that you're almost precisely 24 blocks away from the spawn, you need to starve yourself to be precise until you have three hearts of health. Then you need to time your jump perfectly so that when you hit the void barrier, you almost instantly die, which will give us a slight chance for a mob to spawn on that single block. And on average, you'll need to starve yourself and time the perfect jump about 18 times to get a single mob to spawn. Now after painstakingly trying to get a mob to spawn, you have a 25% chance that the mob that spawned is a zombie. And on top of that, there's just a 3.3% chance that that zombie spawns with a shovel. And on top of that, there's only another 8.5% chance of that zombie to drop its shovel. So basically after some simple calculations, her jump into the void will give you a minute 0.000039% chance that you'll get the iron shovel you need. Meaning on average it'll take you 25,670 attempts to get a single iron shovel. And assuming that you play Minecraft 24-7 non-stop, this will take you about a year to get a single iron shovel. And that is our first main hurdle. So for most people, this is where it stops. However, for those who want to see the challenges up ahead, there are some tips and tricks that you guys can do to help complete this first step. But disclaimer, it includes using backups. And if you guys want to learn how, go check out Pinu's videos. Now that you've painstakingly obtained your iron shovel, there's one thing left to do. And that is to wait until it snowed. And once it does, you want to break the top snow layer to get snowballs, which you then can convert in your inventory into snow block. Now that you have full blocks, you can place these next to your grass block and expand your island. And this is when you have to start praying that your shovel will last long enough to get you at least 23 snow blocks, as that is the minimum amount of blocks you need to be able to move on with this challenge. And sadly, if your shovel doesn't make the cut, you'll have to repeat the entirety of our initial steps to get another iron shovel. And once you've obtained these 23 snow blocks, you'll have to place these in a single line, which will mean that your island will be one block by 24 blocks long. That number 24 is super important, as it will allow you to just stand on one end and wait for mobs to spawn on the other, therefore allowing us to a lot more resources. Now that you have a little more access to both passive and hostile mobs, you'll need to expand your island until you come across a Tega biome. And these biomes cover a small 11% of the entirety of the Minecraft world, meaning that you'll have to expand your island anywhere between tens of blocks to thousands of blocks. Afterwards, you'll have to wait until foxes spawn. Once a fox spawns, it actually has a 20% chance that the fox spawns with an item in its mouth. On top of that, there's a 1% chance that this item is an emerald. However, when killed, they actually have a 100% chance of dropping the item they're holding. Meaning there's just a 0.02% chance of us getting an emerald for each fox spawn. So with again a bit of math, that means that we need to wait until at least 500 foxes 
have spawned to guarantee us a single emerald. However, my friends, a single emerald is not enough. We need at least three to continue with this challenge. Once you've somehow gathered all these emeralds, you'll have to wait for a wandering trader to spawn, who has a low low chance of just 5% of spawning in an open area. And his trades are random, but we need to hope he has the trade that we're looking for. And that is the moss trade. He will give us three moss blocks for a single emerald, and we need to buy three of them, which will leave us with nine moss blocks, which is the minimum we need. Because now with our nine blocks, we can make a 3x3 square and bone meal it, which will give us a chance of getting an Acelia bush, which when bone meal can turn into a full on tree. And this is our infinite source of wood and also infinite source of dirt. And this is because in the latest edition of Minecraft, when the tree is grown on top of a moss block, the moss block will turn into a rooted dirt block, which then with our shovel, can be turned into a path block and once we place a solid block on top of that it will turn into a normal dirt block now that we have a sustainable source of wood blocks and food we need water to get yourself water you need a cauldron and to get this cauldron we need to kill zombies meaning you'll need to build yourself a mob grinder as zombies when killed have a three to four percent chance of dropping iron ingot and once we've killed about 275 zombies to guarantee ourselves at least 11 iron ingots for a bucket and cauldron, we then can take our cauldron and place it under direct skylight and wait for it to rain, not snow, rain. And after enough time, the cauldron will get full and we can use our bucket to pick up the water and boom, now you have a water bucket. And actually, that's all you can do if you guys want to keep it 100% vanilla. But if you guys are okay with bending a rules a little bit, but still no mods or anything like that, there's still more you can do. Now, for those of you who think you can complete this challenge, here's where it gets even harder. So in the first half of the challenge, it is not theoretically possible for us to defeat the Ender Dragon and therefore finish off the game. A workaround this is to only let the stronghold spawn in our world. We can do this with the help of command block. Now, the only way you can locate it in your skyblock world is to take the exact seed of this world and then make a new world with the same seed but with normal terrain generation. Then, without cheating, you're going to need to basically speedrun that world and get all the stuff you need, go to the nether, get blaze rods, then get yourself eyes of enders. Now, you'll need to locate the stronghold all in survival. Now that you know the exact location of your stronghold, then you should gather all the resources and slowly bridge over. Again, this could be just a couple hundred blocks, all the way to almost a thousand blocks away. Now that you've finally made it to the stronghold, you have access to lava. Now this is where it gets interesting. With the help of the lava, you can now make a cobblestone generator, giving you infinite access to cobblestone, meaning you have infinite access to both wood and stone. Since the stronghold contains exactly 13 sources of lava, you'll have to get yourself some buckets and start gathering up the lava and bringing it back to your base, as now you'll need to make yourself a nether portal. Once you've correctly built your portal, making sure not to accidentally waste any of your lava sources, you'll have to find a way to light this portal. Since there's no flint and steel, there's only one way of doing it, and that is to lead a trail of fire into the portal, causing it to light up. To do this, put some burnable blocks near the portal, light them using lava. Then you're going to want to wait for the fire to spread into the portal, causing it to light. Now you'll have to gather up all your courage and walk through the portal into the nether. On the other side, you'll see that the nether is just as barren as the overworld. Now you have to expand your nether island until you somehow come across an area where a nether fortress would have been. Then you'll want to expand your island to have a big enough area for blazes to spawn, as blazes can spawn in nether fortresses. You'll have to successfully kill at least 12 blazes to get enough blaze rods, as each blaze has a solid 50% chance of dropping a blaze rod. And we need to get at least 6 rods, as that equals to 12 blaze powders. Gold. That is the next resource we need. The only way we can get it is by killing zombie piglin. 
since manually killing them would just lead us to dying over and over and over again, you're going to want to build another farm, a piglin farm. After building a decently sized one, you should be able to get enough gold to move on to the next step, which is bartering with the piglin. If you're lucky enough for some piglins to spawn on your island, you are going to want to trade your gold with them. And from the massive list of possible items we can get in return, there is a 2% chance that they will give us anywhere between 2 to 4 ender pearls, which means that a maximum of 300 trades must be done to obtain at least 12 ender pearls. Meaning to be safe, you'll just need to get 300 gold ingots. And to anyone that's made it this far, you're almost done. Now the only thing you have left to do is light up that ender portal and face off against the ender dragon without any armor or any support, meaning you'll have to kill it speedrunner style. So if you're able to do all of this, in theory and statistically, after about five years of non-stop Minecraft, that's it. You've done it. You've completed the hardest possible challenge in Minecraft.